going on guys, Derek here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a full album reaction for the new Billie Eilish album called Happier Than Ever. This will actually be my first ever full listen to a Billie Eilish album. Obviously, I've heard a, a bunch of her songs. She's one of the biggest pop stars in the world. Nah, I'm a pop star, not a doctor. But I've never actually sat down and listened to a full album by her. I saw that it was the most pre-added album in Apple Music history. So obviously, there's a lot of attention and buzz behind this album. So it'll be cool to, to really check it out. I've always been fascinated by her and Phineas's relationship and how he's her producer and just like the dynamic duo that they are and how young they are is mind-blowing to me. So I've listened to a few of the songs already, like I did a guitar tutorial for Therefore I Am on my YouTube channel, and then I did a reaction to Your Power and NDA on my Patreon. So I've listened to, I think, three of the songs on this album so far. And I'm going to post the uncut version of this reaction on my Patreon and the uh, cut up one on, on YouTube. I think I want to do like a Billie Eilish week too. So if you do end up going over to Patreon and joining, I'm going to make a post and a poll for you guys to suggest any other videos or songs that you want me to react to by Billy, where I listen to the album, but also do like some cool videos that you guys know of as well. Her first album crushed it. I think it was the most, if I remember correctly, it was the, the top selling album of 2019. When we all fall asleep, where do we go? If you count physical sales, streaming, and uh, vinyl sales. I don't want to make this intro too long, but I'm really pumped to check this out because I think with Phineas's production style, winning the Grammy for producer of the year at 22, and then obviously Billy and her insane vocals, it's something that's really unique and propelled them to the to the top of pop stardom. But anyways, enough of me talking. Let's jump into the album. The first song on Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish is called Getting Older. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys have watched any of my album reactions, I think I've only done two so far, but I like to not pause as much just because I think that the way an album should be consumed is by kind of immersing yourself in the music and just listening. I try to, to minimize my pausing and talking, but the one thing that I really want to point out here is the honesty and the maturity in the songwriting so far is so, so good. It's really cool too because the title is Getting Older and you can already see that maturity in the songwriting compared to other songs that I've heard from Billy. Like the opening line, I'm getting older, I think I'm aging well. I wish someone had told me I'd be doing this by myself. I'm a big, big proponent of just honest songwriting. I think that's the number one key to being a relatable artist is just being genuine. Like people can sniff out when you're not when you're not being uh, authentic. And that's always been one of Billy's strengths and, and Phineas is that there's no BS there. It's just who they are. Let's keep going here, but I, I like this one so far. Added drums now with that scent. Ooh, cool reverb on a vocal. So pretty. Next week, I hope I'm somewhere laughing for anybody asking, but now I think it's time. <laughs> That's quite the second track opening. Um, so yeah, first track, I like it already. The maturity in the songwriting, it really follows suit too with the some of the interviews that I've seen of Billy talking about this album of just like wanting to be more mature in her songwriting. And you know, obviously there was the whole Vogue cover and all of the, the drama behind that, but just it's, you know, she is maturing. And I think that it's important to do that as an artist and, and evolve and, and continue to move forward and press the, you know, press the boundary of what you want to accomplish in your music. Right away, she's making that clear in the first track here. The one thing that I'm really curious about with this album is, um, you know, if you look at the album, the first debut album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? It was a very, you know, mysterious, almost like ominous type of album. I went and actually counted up last night that nine of the 14 tracks on that album were in a minor key. Two of them, uh, Bury a Friend and Bad Guy, 
were in the same minor key, G minor, which Billy actually, in analyzing her music, she really likes the key of G sharp minor to G minor. She, I think her vocal range fits really well within that, that key. Number two is I didn't change my number. It sounds like there's a dog about to take your head off in the beginning part of this. <laughs> Okay, I gotta stop it already because this is what's crazy. It almost sounds like Phineas, and he does this all the time. Phineas makes you pay attention to these minor, minor details that he uses in, in the production that nobody, like nobody that I currently listen to is thinking of these days. Again, I think it's a big reason why he won producer of the year at 22. He's doing these things that are so out in left field, but add to everything that they're doing. It sounds like to me that this dog growl is actually kind of like part of the hi-hat. It's certainly an element of the percussion, but it sounds like he's using that growl as like the open hi-hat. Kind of. It's crazy. I like that sound in the background. <laughs> I like the angst in this one. Mm. This is a heck of a start. I already liked the first two songs a lot. That one was considerably shorter than the first one, two minutes and 38 seconds versus 404 for getting older. But the production, I mean, Phineas just does not fail to amaze me on his production and the the ingenuity that he shows with every song he he produces it's just it's mind blowing i saw a video where he literally was you know like i mentioned that kind of that dog growl or, or whatever it is he's using it as a percussive element i saw a video i forget what song it was for her where they literally were striking matches in a bathroom and that's what they were using for the snare sample in the song song number three is called billy bossa nova i haven't heard this one obviously but uh here we go it's so boring Cool percussion. <laughs> Classic harmonies from Billy. Yeah, I, so that one for me doesn't really capture your attention as much melodically. Um, I really like the percussion on it. Again, Phineas and his innovative percussive sampling is something to behold, but uh, the standout for me in that song is the lyrical content. It's really, the first three songs in this album, Getting Older, I Didn't Change My Number, and Billy Bossa Nova. Getting Older and Billy Bossa Nova to me, they're, they're following this theme of the struggles of fame and trying to hide like your emotions and the perspective of like needing to hide your life because it could be twisted or whatever in the media and you know what all that kind of stuff all of the the negative stuff that's associated with being famous billy is kind of uh acknowledging in in some of these songs at least getting older and billy bossa nova and showing that honesty of her struggles with it all right so number four is my future i don't think i've heard this song yet let's check it out gosh your vocals are so good that falsetto Notice how wet her vocal is here too. You can hear the reverb in the back. Like she's singing in a bathroom or something. She might be. Really cool chords here too. Sounds like you have some, some major seven chords. There's that contrast like she had in the first album between sections. Added percussion now. Tons of vocals there. Mm. That song sounds to me a lot more like the first album in some ways because you had like the very 
soft and lo-fi first verse and chorus and then going into the second verse they added the percussion the guitar more a lot more uh delay on her vocal and then all those vocal stacks too one thing about billy any billy song is that her vocal to me is is the main instrument and i think phineas the the genius of phineas is that he finds ways to complement and kind of just support the talent of her vocal and accentuate it and in this song you know she has that trademark whispery falsetto tone that she's known for and it's no secret that you know billy has been known to literally record vocals for days on end until she phrases something just the way she likes it song number five is called oxytocin interesting title obviously oxytocin is the chemical in your body that's associated with like you know happiness and uh, love and all that kind of stuff so we'll see uh what this song is about track number five oxytocin cool bass Colin got a sheep, okay? Okay. <laughs> Much more mature here too. Ooh, distorted vocal. That scream in the background there. Dang, I like that song actually. I would have loved to have seen Phineas's face. I don't know if uh, if Billy wrote that by herself. Who wrote? Let's see who wrote it. Uh, it might not have it out yet. Oh, it says Phineas and Billy wrote it. Well, that might be because Phineas produced it, but maybe he did write it too. The title of the song goes along with the the theme of the of the lyrics too. Obviously, oxytocin. Like I mentioned, it's a uh, the the love drug, as some people say, and she's kind of phrasing that as as uh, as it is here that uh, she wants to do something to somebody. Production wise, that song's really cool. That deep bass, like that sub bass with the uh, the oscillating vocals and like even that distorted scream at the end there. So song number six is called Goldwing in all caps. I haven't heard this one. I'm pulling up the lyrics. Let's jump into it. Do you know how many times they probably recorded these vocals? A lot. Same Goldwing there. What you are. I like the groove of this one too. <laughs> Two minutes and 30 seconds. So that's the shortest song on the album so far. And really, I think it almost seems like a transitional song to me. Mmm. Got bass. I like this one. This, this must be the bridge. The vocals. Mix it back in the mix. And in the chorus, it came right in your face. Along with all the vocal chops and harmonies, I just love like the kind of F you type of attitude behind that song. That's a good one. All right, so in song number eight is called Haley's Comet. Does someone else have a song titled Haley's Comet? I'm gonna look that up. Oh no, you know what I'm thinking of? Second Chance by Shine Down. Do you guys remember this song? When I think of Haley's Comet, this is what I think of. This is such a good song.
<laughs> All right, anyways, I love that song. That's what I think of when I think of Haley's Comet. Let's jump into it. Let's jump into Billy's version of Haley's Comet. Wouldn't that be something if this was a cover? She would crush it. Well, it's not. I don't Sounds pretty. I haven't slept since Sunday. Mm, the rawness in that vocal. Being pitched down there. Almost like an underwater type feel to it. You know, there's kind of two themes that are emerging for me from this album, and the main one is just like the struggle with fame and and all of the the uh, the attention and the fallacies that are involved with that. But also, I think a piece of that too that you're hearing in this album is how that can impact a relationship with a person. You know, like the line, midnight for me is 3 a.m. for you. So I assume she's talking about somebody that lives on the East Coast and she lives in LA. And, you know, kind of just like, she's obviously always touring and traveling and performing and has a crazy busy schedule trying to record an album. And the downfall to that is that, you know, you can't put as much time into a personal relationship as, you know, she probably wants to and, and the struggle and the, the confliction of that. I always love the sounds that Phineas uses. They're so interesting. Oscillating, so you have left and right pan. Stuff right there. Like me to be quiet. Guys, we decide who they are. We decide what they're worth. Not my responsibility. There's this title right there. At the very end, she has the title. That song to me is more of an interlude and a open letter to everybody. It sounds like a song that's in the conjuring that's like a demonic person that's going to come out of the closet any second in one of those movies. I started talking, they started laughing. Again, this seems more about fame to me. Like paparazzi type stuff, taking photos. Did you really think this is the right thing to do? I love when they do that vocal distortion, alteration. Yeah, again, that's, I mean, it's totally the lyrical theme of this album is just like the struggles with fame. This one to me seems more like her talking about paparazzi and just, you know, I, again, I can't even understand that kind of stuff, guys. Like, I've never lived in LA. I live in Michigan. But the fact that, like, I, when I see videos of, like, the paparazzi surrounding a celebrity's car, it's just crazy to me. I understand it's a business and a job, and, you know, they have to put food on the table for their family, but, like, my goodness. Yeah, I just, I've never understood the paparazzi and all that stuff. That stuff kind of creeps me out, too. And obviously, uh, I think it does for Billy as well. Everybody dies. Surprise, surprise. Oh. That airy tone is unmatched. She's so good at it. They'll find another way. I just wonder why you Ooh, that's a heck of a line there. Have an equity in life. 
This sounds really trippy or like stoner talk here, but it feels like you're in another world, just floating, like very spiritual. She has a, vo a vocal quality and tone to her voice that it's so gen it's so just like unique, genuine, and unmatched. Again, I feel like I'm saying the same things, but it's it's what's coming to my head. There's not many people that have the vocal quality of her that it's so distinctive and unique in their singing style. Song number 12 is called Your Power. I did do a reaction to this uh, music video on my Patreon, I think maybe about a month ago. So I have heard this song and uh, it's a good one. Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite ones too, I think. I love the acoustic guitar in that one. And just again, the ethereal vocal, like big sound. I'm not gonna be surprised if they do, and I hope they do, a like a breakdown production wise of this. And she sung that in like this big bathroom. I know that Phineas probably puts a ton of reverb and stuff on her vocal and they're, they're very vocal effects focused, but I just, everything about that song. I broke this down more on my uh, initial reaction, but if you wanna play this on guitar, The song uh, really has three main chords. So you have an F major in standard tuning. You have an A minor, and this is kind of like a an A minor seven, I think. Then you have an E minor. So those are the three main chords, and if you wanted to, you know, kind of play it on guitar, it would sound something like this. So I'd play something like that. I'm not gonna break this down too much. I think I broke it down a little more in that uh, initial reaction on Patreon, but that's kind of how I would play this song. And then you obviously you have that lick too, that uh, I think there's another guitar, like a, a lead guitar playing that. But I really like that one too. Oh yeah, I remember the, the, the bass in this, I think. Did you think I show up in the limousine? Yeah. Had to save my money for security. On this way, I made him sign an MDA. That cool bend at the end of that note too, that on that synth. That's cool. Oh, I forgot about this part. Here's the contrast right here. Oh yeah, this is the one I thought had a very similar sound to, uh, was it Bad Guy or? That sound right there, it sounds familiar. Didn't change my number, so alluding to the second track. This part. I didn't realize that that led into. Okay. I had no idea that that. I was wondering why it was speeding up, but it goes right into "Therefore I Am." So again, I mean, yeah, that that song's up there for me too. That one, I love the. Uh, 
I, I really like the like distorted grungy synth in that the Phineas used and then the auto-tune creative choice that they put on her vocal in the in the chorus it's really really unique especially for her voice like she doesn't need auto-tune but when you put it on there and you crank it it gives her voice a really cool quality I just love that line uh, didn't change my number made him shut his mouth <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. I just can't help but think, guys, like, this song was produced and recorded in a bedroom. If you looked at the Billboard 100 right now and you said, okay, how many of these songs were produced by a major label producer? I guarantee, usually there will be, like, three or four producers that produce a majority of the top 100 songs. Obviously, you hear about Max Martin, and then just, like, you know, people with big names signed to big labels producing the same songs. It is so incredible to me that Billy and Phineas do this in their bedroom, just them, and they can produce something like this that is the biggest album in the world. Yeah, again, I'm just a big fan of this. So let's start uh, Therefore I Am again. I did do a guitar tutorial, I think, on this one, but that was months ago. I don't, I don't really remember this song off the top of my head. So here we go. Uh, Track number 14, therefore I am. How much battery do I got? Oh, my battery's about to die. All right, I gotta change my battery real quick. All right, here we go, we're back. Therefore I am Billie Eilish. Oh, it's a cool like record spin I'm sample. Not your friend or any stop. What the hell are you talking about? Get my pretty name out of your mouth. We are not the same. Articles, 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 right there you remain. I'm remarkable. game sample. Mm. I forgot about that song. I'm curious to go back and see what I said for the guitar trail now because I'm trying to remember how they played that on, on acoustic. If they do more acoustic stuff too, I for sure will do some uh, some tutorials on how to play it like them because I think some of these songs would be an interesting spin if they put like their their acoustic uh, acoustic type of thing on it. Acoustic sounds like a Frank Sinatra type of thing. This song is interesting. I want to try and figure out, so I know that it's, it's in the key of C. She goes to an E major, A minor. Yeah, so I think it goes C, E major, A minor, F, if you wanted to play it on guitar. But uh, it's a very, very interesting song. That E major chord in the key of C is not common. When I'm away from you, I'm happier than ever. So I don't know who this person is, but man, did they mess up. Drunk in your bench, a minor, F, C. Ooh, I like this second half so far. Hell yeah. I mean, again, talk about like the contrast. I don't. I didn't mean to stop it, but I have to because the second half of this song is money like I, I really I wish the first half I did like an acoustic folk little thing 
So, you know, you had that very, very, uh, like, very Americana almost feel to this song. And now the second half is like this grungy, in-your-face, metal rock type of thing going on. I kind of wish that the whole song would have been like this, but one of the things that Phineas and Billy do so well is they mix up their dynamics and contrast that captures your attention. I mean, that second half came out of nowhere for me, and I, I like this second half a lot. Big drums here, too. Yeah, this song's good. She's screaming in the background. Everything's blown out. The second half of that song is something else. I, I like that song a lot. All right, this top three thing is gonna be harder than I thought it was gonna be. All right, guys, so this is the last song of the album. Track number 16, it's called Male Fantasy. So here we go. Like it already. Acoustic. Distract myself with pornography. I hate the way she looks at me. Let's fight it's a male fantasy I'm going back to therapy We're just pretending to mm. be alright convinced us Alright I like this one a lot too. Let me try and figure I wanna figure this out on guitar. My goodness, that is such a good song to end on. Like the guitar player in me, when I hear an acoustic song like that, just makes me, I just want to figure it out. And I was conflicted because her vocal sounds so good in this one and the acoustic guitar, like that, you know, the whole production thing, Phineas is a master at, but to be honest with you, like this stuff right here, like male fantasy, that's all you need for Billy because her vocal is so good. And when you have that, complimented by an acoustic guitar. There's just something so real about it that it seems like they recorded that in one take almost. And yeah, I don't know. There's something about a guitar and a vocal to me that um, you can't really beat when it comes to, to songs. What I can tell though, and I don't want to make this a guitar tutorial, but the song, I think it's in the key of D. And the way that you'd want to play it to sound like Billy here is you'd want to capo on the ninth fret so that you have these voice shaping, so you have the key of G chord shapes. And I think for most of the song, you had C to D, or sorry, C to G to D to E minor. So you had something like, uh, Something like that. I'm just going down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. I hope that they come out with a full acoustic version of this live because I will 100% do a, uh, a guitar lesson on that. So yeah, that is a heck of a way to end the album. I would be lying if I said that this is the kind of music that I listen to on a daily basis. I really don't listen to this kind of music, but when someone like Billy comes out with an album, you have to, as a musician, as someone that is just, you know, just loves music, you have to pay attention to what her and Phineas are doing because they are so innovative. I know I've said that a lot, but that's, if I could think of one word, you know, it's, it's tr they're, they're trailblazers. That's two words, but I'm gonna say it's one, it's hyphenated. Phineas is 23 maybe, and she's 19. It's just, it's unbelievable. And this, this album definitely has a very different and more mature feel to me than her debut album. But if I'm being honest, I, I think that this is a, an awesome, 
second album from from Billy. The theme of like struggling with fame and relationships and trying to find happiness is so evident, but also so mature and honest. And that's from an artist. That's what I want to hear. I want to I want I want to hear music that I know you are writing about because you have went through it. And there's no doubt that this album is that for Billy. If I had to pick my top three, I'm just amazed at her talent, Phineas's talent their age, their DIY production style, you know, the fact that this wasn't just a generic producer creating another pop hit, another pop album. You know, I really hope that they maintain that innocence and like that that approach of just recording these albums in their bedroom because that is the best thing about this. It's just, it's incredible. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for listening to music with me and, and listening to this album with me. That was a lot of fun and a, a very, very solid album from Phineas and Billy, in my opinion. I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, we'll definitely be listening to, to more of these songs in the coming coming weeks. Again, if you guys want to watch the full uncut version of this reaction, I will be posting that on my Patreon. And um, if you sign up over there, it's also going to allow you to comment and let me know what other songs or videos you guys want me to do, as I kind of do like this Billie Eilish, happier than ever uh, release week type of thing over there. So I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.